Um, this song's a little long, so your girl's gonna um cut it off in the middle <laughs> and play another song. I did not, man, drill. Okay, this song's like seven minutes, so we're just gonna go ahead and. Ooh. We're gonna play another song, okay, and then we're gonna start the conversation. Mandrill, I did not get your email. Uh, what the hell did you do to your hair? It's a so after this song, we'll get into the conversation. I'm going to mute myself. We killed it, so we all deserve it. 
it I tell you how we want it all left right you've been here before so do it till you get right get it one more no you can't deny it baby don't you hide it I like it I bite it so just tell me if you are worth it you really wanna know I've been in reverses singing real holla holla we going out mixing out this right don't ask me if you don't know why I keep the switch the noise is flat All right, let's unmute us both. Okay, hey, Twan. Sound check. Hey. What up, what up, what up? Can y'all hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Ooh, not a not an ad. Hold on, let me cut it off. Okay, there we go. All right. So I just wanted to play two songs to give an idea of like some of the sounds that we're talking about. Um, why am I still hearing stuff? Oh, never mind. I turned it on. My bad. I got scared. I got scared. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> we were listening to Jay Park. We opened with Jay Park uh, DNA, which is a Kendrick. Is that even a remix? Remake? I mean, what would you call it? Remake? Reimagining? Of of what? Of of the original DNA song. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a, a reimagining like a cover. I want to say cover. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I mean, because he ain't re reinventing nobody's wheel. I mean, no, he not. But it, it wasn't like exactly like he's saying word for word. He's right. So I, I would classify that, that as like a cover. That's a cover. cover a cover. Okay. So a cover of Kendrick Lamar's DNA. And we all know Kendrick Lamar is black. Um, And that is a... Is Jay Park J Japanese or Korean? I don't know. Korean. Cool. Korean. I guess we Korean. Korean. Okay. Um, and then the second song was XG Left Right, which is not a cover of anybody's song, but it's so like clearly inspired by R&B over here, right? Like 2000s kind of mm -hmm. thought. Um, so I wanted to play those two songs. I mean, we got a lot more we can play, but I just decided to stop at those two. Um, but today we're going to be talking about cultural appropriation versus appreciation. Twan and I are not cammed up today. As you can see, we usually are cammed up, but my internet is ghetto. Um, and Twan is like, it's just kind of weird to be on camera by yourself. So, <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> like so we, we good over here, but at the same time, I'm also mm -hmm. really dusty. So I don't mind being off camera. He's like, I'm dusty. Never did. You be looking cute or whatever. Mm -hmm. So that being said, I'm gonna put the chat up over on the side. Um, this is a podcast, so we are live. Um, I know YouTube has a podcast feature now. So if you don't want to see the screen, you can use YouTube music to listen to our podcast. I don't know how you find it. Don't ask me no questions. I just know it's <laughs> over there somewhere <laughs> um it's under otaku talk so i don't know if you can actually search in the podcast i don't really know how that works but we are officially a podcast on youtube so that is a nice feature um i'm hoping we can reach more people that way um hello to everybody in chat i see critically drinking i know trash can waves came through mandrill came through say hello nova rain says appreciation is appropriate 
appropriation and appropriation what is an appropriate appreciation see i'm not playing with you yeah i get that I, 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 oh, I can't even start the first word look yeah at this is like a tongue twister let's put that up appreciation <laughs> is appropriate appreciation and appropriation is inappropriate appreciation okay thank you because i was not there wasn't coming through um critically drinking <laughs> said appropriation to him so twan and i we i don't know why we decided to talk about this but we here we are and we are both like fans of k-pop and j-pop i mean we not super fans would you qualify right. no fan? i would not qualify myself as a super fan i would qualify myself as a casual listener and appreciator <laughs> of some of the sounds oh. that i hear okay same with me i'm actually newer to k-pop i've been listening to j-pop a lot longer just because anime j-pop have like a relationship mm -hmm. um i'm kind of newer to the k-pop side of the pun but i'm actually more into the r&b artists the k the korean r&b artists and so i don't even know if everybody i listen to is pop but i like H xg which is a that, that group is japanese korean and all of their songs are in english so i don't know what they are Right. Um, to give you an idea on my end is for the longest time I did not know there was a difference. <laughs> I thought it was Asian music <laughs> for a long time when I was younger. Like, you know, no. growing up watching anime, loving some of the right. intros. And I, I was like, oh, this is I love this music. Blah, blah, blah. Growing a little later, you start hearing people specifically say K-pop and you hear their right. music and you're like, oh yeah, I love that. Like, uh, what's that anime? And it's like, that's that's not that's, okay that's not the same but it's <laughs> that's even started to be mixed because you have manhwa which is like korean uh, manga true. which is now becoming animated and has like k-pop artists in them it's just mm -hmm. like so much crossover and mixing um so we want to have this conversation if you saw the thumbnail for today's show i definitely circled kai from xo who is a k-pop group uh, he had a solo uh, album and one of the songs is called mm -hmm, like the sound M M H M and mm -hmm. he had a do-rag on in the video you know and that's one of my favorites so here we are where should we start well I guess we should you know just start off with a simple garden variety def defining of a cultural appropriation okay Ooh, and let's see here. Sneezing. Sorry. Huh? You gonna get it? I say my cat was sneezing. I'm, I'm gonna let you you read that uh, definition. So this is a it's a cultural appropriation occurs when a dominant culture cultural group adopts elements of another minority group's heritage or cultural makeup. Throughout pop culture, there are many instances of people from a dominant culture wearing the fashions, using the dialects, and other and otherwise utilizing the intellectual property that rightfully belongs to a minority or indigenous culture. This can lead to a feeling of disrespect among members of the group who see others stealing and commodifying their traditions and styles. Okay, well, um, <laughs> well, that Loaded. being said, uh what is what's the definition of appreciation can we get that just to be fair yeah let's let's see a cultural appreciation can be described as a way of honoring another culture through exploration and seeking an understanding of a way to honor that culture beliefs and traditions there's a thin line between cultural appreciation and cultural appropriation Okay, thank you for that. Um, well, I mean, that definition kind of settled my argument, but we're going to talk about <laughs> it. Because <laughs> even Let's on Instagram, I was like, I'm on the fence. I'm not really sure. But damn, I mean, yeah. Yeah, um, that was a really succinct. I, I, and it's crazy. I found that so quickly because I did not see that before when I was looking at <laughs> all the stuff. All the stuff. I mean, and in the chat, um, first of all, let me know if, my, if I'm too loud or not because I'm using this camera microphone and it's a little ghetto and i turn myself down but the the camera's is very close to me so if i'm a little loud or over overpowering to one let me know i can turn my volume down and if i'm um, speaking like a church mouse let me know i can i can beef it up don't do that okay um <laughs> i just call it appropriation when black people would probably be excluded whereas in many countries black artists would be welcome collaborators okay that's an interesting take so First of all, let's start off with these are Asian people in their own 
countries mm -hmm. and they are taking elements of hip hop R&B and adding them to their culture I don't even know how to feel about it because I don't feel like black people are they even are black people really even I'm, this is gonna sound bad but like are black people a factor in <laughs> Korean you know what I mean like it's not like, like in the music or, yeah like if you're Korean and you're from Korea I feel like black like yes there are black people who live in Korea but mm -hmm. like it's not like how in America like there's so many mix of cultures and races that right have this natural awareness that it's not just your race you know what I mean like mm -hmm. it just feels weird to me to like because he was saying like oh black people are excluded but it's like how do you include okay I guess that'll be the first one in a homogeneous country like Korea Japan you know what would it look like to include black people I mean there are some k-pop bands like there's a girl group that I saw in a video that has a black girl as one of the uh, members you know what I okay. mean so uh -huh. I think that would be a version of that like they even though it you know most k-pop girl bands are all you know Korean girls they branched out and they have now a black female I don't think she's a lead or anything but she's in the group mm -hmm. she's just in the group I mean that's nice but like you know, they're already black people already in minority of a minority of a minority in Korea. And I'm like, okay, so you gotta find unless you And that's black swan, by the way. And okay. And is she like a native? Or she is she Korean or Japanese? But well, the group is called Black Swan. The girl mm -hmm. um in the uh group is her name is uh Fat uh whew. I don't know, I don't I'll be just so disrespectful. Fato <laughs> Samba Okay. Fato she sounds like she's from there. No, she is not from there. She, oh, let me okay. see. Because I remember somebody explaining, like, I, she, I think she moved to Korea and then okay. joined the group. Like, That's later. what I was like, wondering. Like, are you going to have to just, like, get people to, like, come over and, like, join the group just for the sake of, like, having an inclusive? Which, I mean, I guess. How, what do you think about this? It's like, welcome to the corporate world. We do have diversity. See that black girl over there doing right. calls? <laughs> it's like affirmative action in K-pop groups? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know what, like, how do you, what do you think? I don't know enough about Fato's, um, I hope, Fato, I hope I say her name right. Um, Fafa. I don't know Fafa's um, relationship in the group like that. I need to do a little bit more research on that. This is kind of something I saw in passing. Um, but I wonder, like, what is, like, does she have, like, actual say in the group? Is she is she just a, a you know, a, a trophy piece, a token to have oh, in the group? Not like or... that. She got her own apartment, and she just, like, she just show up for the show, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, I want to, I, I don't know, I want to I wanna know more about what her um, role is in the group for me to really answer that. But, right. like, as all, all I can really say for that is, like, if they're if the person is talented <laughs> you know if they show and they ask you know when they audition for you or whatever and you put them in the group you know girl make your coin i'm not about to be mad at miss samba or black uh what the name of that group is black swan for having this girl in there and i would give them a little kudos or like a pat on the back for including her into the group whether it is performing mm -hmm. performative or not because you are given opportunities in a um environment or in a you know i guess I, I feel like that's where we differ because i just hate that i know you it's gonna be forced mm -hmm. like you if it's not the norm it's gonna have to be forced for it to even be a thing right or right because you it's not we can't tell we can't tell if, if these girls are just like what their intentions are behind having this girl in the group you know if they've always wanted other people in the group if they saw the opportunity and snatched it up we will really never get into their psyche of it we can only look at the optics I mean, and also at the same time, just because you have a black person in the group doesn't mean now y'all can all just start wearing do rags. And oh, that is not it. Insane. Right. That is not it. <laughs> so I don't know if that fixes the problem, though. It doesn't fix it. You know it. what I mean? It definitely doesn't fix it. I don't think really there's very little to quote unquote fix this, which I feel like we'll get into later. But it's kind of this thing that's just been like this ain't like new either. Like this type of appropriation appreciation in K-pop 
isn't like the last 10 years like it goes back like before i was born oh, it's bad bad because it was a guy yeah, girl like 30 like 30 the, plus years i want to say i mean yeah because even in fashion like you know there's harajuku fashion and the sort of culture of that is even Garu girls the g-y-a-r-u and they i mean it's like super tanned right like it was mm. kind of like super super tan but a lot of people who had never seen it before were like oh they look like they putting on blackface because they get so dark like so dark and they wear like braids or this bleach blonde hair i mean so even back then i mean that was probably one of the first moments where people were like is that blackface like <laughs> what's going on over there and i mean they also have like a hip-hop subculture even in like harajuku or tokyo street fashion like I can't remember but, the name off the top of my head right now. Even but, then, I mean, though, it's, it's, persecution of this type of stuff, like the persecution of somebody doing blackface, wouldn't <laughs> be as aggressive as it is now. You know, society's changed, you know, with mm -hmm. a lot of the new kids, you know, growing up with the internet and being aware of different people's um, experiences and whatnot. Like, we, the can that's where cancel, cancel culture was born, you know? So, like if people out here are just blatantly doing blackface now, they face more consequences than they would before when it would just be like, what the fuck is they doing and move on with their day, you know? Yeah. I mean, yes. Blackface is definitely like a thing. I mean, even Zoe Zardona to me did blackface and that's a whole nother show and a conversation. But, you know, <laughs> I, I just Simone. saying. For my Nina Simone. I'm never going to let that go. That's not. I'm never Because the fact that you had to add prosthetics <laughs> to this already black woman to make her look like Nina Simone when there are oh. I can think of two women off the oh top I would God. probably want to do Nina Simone and you ain't gotta do shit to them. I've just I've never letting it go. I'm sorry. So black nah. people can do indeed do blackface. Um but what was the I'm sorry that just always tickles me and pisses me off at the same time. But um yeah I think it's been something that's going on. I know we were talking about Jay Park. I know with a lot of these uh K K pop or Korean R&B artists and stuff, they're working with black producers and like black choreographers. And I mean, some of this is, I mean, some of the producers aren't, but like they're working with black artists. So in, to some degree, like, does that make it better? Okay. Because there are black the people being employed. Well, because they're being employed. Like it's not, yeah, they're not the leading faces of the group, but they're like, the producers and the choreographers like they somebody a black person is getting a check cut behind the scenes because of right these that is so, true and that is also something that i want to take into consideration when it comes to that because a large part of cultural appropriation for me is like the people that you're taking this from they aren't getting monetized off of it they're not they're not benefiting from this it's you s snatching the culture away with no basis no you didn't know no, no experiences you didn't grow up in this area you didn't you don't live this stuff but you're seeking the benefits off of it and you're blowing up 30 times more than any of these artists that you're still in these ideas are you know oh yes which is ooh, yeah i guess that's the next point but let's let me see he said no that's commerce not culture are black artists visible i mean you know the black artists aren't visible but at the same time it's korea or it's japan right so like I mean, like what it, you know what I mean? I to me it just feels like, I mean, what do you want? I mean, it's Korea, it's Japan. <laughs> I mean, what percentage of the race is Korean in Japan? Like I mean, in Korea, like what percent? 90, 98, 99? What percentage is is what? Like if you're in Korea or Japan, like what is the percentage? What's the racial mix over there? Oh, you know what I mean? Uh, let me like, see. Because also these groups don't have white girls in them. They don't have nobody. They is just they're Korean or they're Japanese, right? So like I don't know if I feel like black artists being visible out of Korea. I'm not even checking for that, honestly. I mean, yeah, because if I'm looking for black artists, I ain't going outside my country. You know what I mean? So you know, I feel like, like it's kind of weird to expect. Like I don't. And if I'm looking for Afro beats, I'm not. I'm not looking in the U.S. <laughs> you know, that like authentic. You know, yeah, I just don't know. I, I, I wonder, like, when we had that, is anime getting into woke conversation? And we were like, what do we expect? And I was just kind of like, but it's Japan. Like, not to say that everything is okay, but like, I don't know. He said, but that's appreciation. 
I just, I'm just not checking for I'm not expecting I don't need to see a black artist in my K-pop group I, I really don't yeah I, I mean I don't either I like it's the thing is I feel like it's it's because that was a beat in that conversation too that we had when we were like it's because we at least for me love the genre so much grew up with the genre imagined ourselves as these antagonists and protagonists you know so in a sense we do want to see ourselves selfishly in this medium i'm um, not saying that that's completely right or not because that wasn't something that was born here that wasn't something that had us in mind and it wasn't and, and that's not a bad thing either you know what i'm saying like i feel like the difference for me would be if it came from a place of uh legitimacy or gen genuinity <laughs> you know what i mean like for, for example i'm not saying that they, they, that's not a genuosity that's you know not a um it's gonna be today because <laughs> somebody <laughs> like jay jay park he wasn't born in korea he grew up in the states and he moved to korea right. when he was like 17 18. You know, so I can't say who he's grown, who he's grown up around or what his friends were. But um, uh, uh, if he grew, if he did grow up in an area, let's say let's say he did grow up in the Bronx or some shit. You know what I mean? Like and he was surrounded right. by people that talked a certain way, that lived a certain way, that treated him a certain way. You know, right. regardless if they gave him passes or not, that's his he grew up in that area. He knows the dialect he knows what people are talking about and when he raps not saying he is this is a total hypothetical situation if he's rapping about what he's lived and and it sounds good i'm all for it <laughs> you know like i i just I, I love music so much that i appreciate the sounds that are coming out of people's mouths and when it when i when it sounds um inorganic <laughs> when it sounds like something manufactured when it sounds corny as hell that's when my ears perk up and start to look into it a little deeper you know what i mean there's a part of me that right. fully dives into and very i'm being very transparent here selective <laughs> outrage you know because if you yes. like a lot of people say if you're gonna be mad at one thing you need to be mad at it across the board and right. i don't even fully want to uh argue that because i do feel like there is uh there is something to standing your ground with certain things and being passionate about it and not just picking and choosing but also if if you really ain't hurting nobody especially if somebody's getting paid off of it that is black i i say let them live <laughs> you know uh, yeah i mean i think when we first talked about having this i'm like okay i'm scared to talk about this but i'm coming at it from a fan like i mean maybe i'm a hypocrite maybe it's a pass but like I think I would feel a little bit more stronger about it if I saw white. Sorry, I got toddlers in the back yelling. Um, but I think I would feel a little different if I saw white artists or white people in general included it in these spaces. And I don't. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like I would feel like it was a concerted effort to keep black people out if I saw white people included in K pop groups and stuff like that and they weren't including black people. You know what I mean? But it's not for me that I'm kind of I've arrived to the place that you've arrived like you know black people back there getting the check cut because this is another thing like the style of music that they're doing America has moved on from that style to some degree mm -hmm. yes. so a lot of those producers and choreographers are probably like you know what I mean like that's where they've gone to find work yeah, like I keep consistent work yeah, when you think about it, what is the bulk of K-pop music? It's boy bands, it's girl bands. It's that right. stuff we had in the early 2000s, the late 90s that we were obsessed with, Backstreet Boys, TLC, mm -hmm. uh in Escape, uh you know, all the Destiny's Child, uh, but more so the you know, the the pop bye 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 type feeling. You know what I mean? I like mean, that even is K-pop it feels it's like. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but like you, I mean, we listen to XG left, right. I mean, that feels like some Destiny's Child, like modern Destiny's Child, Bob. You know what I mean? Like right. And I was like girl group. was fully bopping to both of those songs over here with my camera off. <laughs> right. I, I mean, really was. Kind of sounded like Aaliyah. I feel like if Aaliyah was still alive, that would be her sound. Yeah. Like I mean, if she went the pop I route, can see, I can like see that. Yeah, like if she didn't lean all the way into like R and B, like real hard, and went all the way on that side, 
if she wanted to get big and like if she for her to blow up to the size of like a doja cat or like you know beyonce or something she would have had to go more of a pop route and i feel like if she would have gone that route her music would have been very close to that Ali is such a conundrum to me, uh, but just because I hear her voice in almost anything when I really mm -hmm. get focused on when I'm in an Aaliyah vibe or if I've been listening mm -hmm. to a lot of Aaliyah music, I started to hear her voice in a lot of everything because I feel like she's one of those personalities and talents that where she, I don't feel like she would have been boxed in. And even if she did choose to, it still would have been great music. So like there are times I, I hear random, the most random ass music. And there's like just something in somebody's voice that remind me of her. And I get on that same tangent. Oh, I wonder what she would have. She probably yeah. could have been here if she would have just did this. You know, especially somebody Definitely. that passed such a time ago. And there's so much growth in the music industry between yeah. that time and now. That's why when I heard Left Red, I'm like, oh my God, Aaliyah would have bodied this. It's, like, that's, even the choreography. <laughs> Like, even if when you watch the video, they're dressed, like, in that, like, 90s Y2K aesthetic. I'm like, Aaliyah would have mm. bodied this choreography. Like, it was swaggy. It was cute. Like, I was like, she would have bodied this choreography. Like, for real, for real. Yeah, I wasn't um, even was, watching the video, nor have I seen the video. And I was over here with my own choreography with that left, right. That little left, right, right. section is hot, bitch. <laughs> I'm yeah. saying, okay? I'm already going to go to the concert if they come to America, okay? I'm already decided. Um, <laughs> Critically Drinker said, I don't need to see us everywhere, but if they appreciate Black people, they're willing to consume Black artists, but if they just copy, that's appropriation. See, um, now... Oh, go ahead. What does that mean? Like, consume? Like, in their free time? Like, go ahead. I I do agree with Rashawn on that. Um, what is the second comment? Like, like the what happened yeah. in the u.s black music was copied black music was copied oh, yeah okay. um elvis <laughs> the black music was copied in places where black artists weren't welcome to walk in front door that that is an appreciation correct but see elvis thought he was appreciating black artists because elvis was like i grew up around black people and like elvis black stole artists. that music I'm just, but that was his argument. He was like, I appreciate black people. I go to the black clubs, which he did. You can appreciate and not steal from somebody. <laughs> you can make it, maybe <laughs> she, he stole that song. <laughs> I'm just playing devil advocate for Elvis stealing music. Okay. I'm just saying. No, I, that I, was I, what I, he if, if, Elvis, he was if Elvis was inspired and he like heard that, you know, Hound Dog and he heard all that, that type of music and he came up with his own stuff, his own whatever. Because I feel like we Elvis didn't. Well, I didn't. I didn't watch the movie, nor do I know Elvis's background um, to really speak on him and his and his intentions. But I just feel like it, it would have been a different situation if he came up with his own original content that wasn't stealing somebody else's music that was already out. <laughs> I mean, um, I definitely, I'm like team. Uh, forget him. Um, if they're simply whitewashing it, Korea, watch what? If they're simply whitewashing it, Korean. And would never listen to a black artist or they would go see lupe fiasco and then go see a japanese artist that's different i definitely know for sure like a lot of the artists who are in these groups do consume and appreciate black like artists um i know i watched the video with xg and they were doing like a song association you know mm -hmm. game and the, the songs they was pulling out like they are some consumers of like r b and right these art Oh, I think they had, do have an appreciation for it. Like one and, girl was singing for it, Kelly, um, who was mm. like, I look for it. And one girl was singing like, I mean, they were singing all kind of stuff, like old bops and new bops, but just like very, they are consumers of that genre. And that's that. Okay. So that, that leads kind of to the back, back to Jay Park, because so the first song you heard that DNA Kendrick Lamar cover, Kendrick Lamar. Kendrick Lamar cover was uh, Jay Park. That was the DNA. And in the video, um, if you look it up or whatever, it's um, it's very black. Um, and he even said it's very black. What is that? Oh, no, um, please. Very black when it comes to it comes to the style of dress. It comes to the mannerisms. Um, it. I mean, he is literally stylistically copying. Kendrick Lamar, you know, how he delivers the song, which like I like it just sounds like I'm nitpicking because it sounds like I can't hate that. It sounds like a, it's a good cover. Like he's he sounds like Kendrick Lamar. He got a great cadence. I love hearing uh, Korean, uh, the Korean language used in rap. I legitimately do. I think it sounds really great, even though I don't know what they're saying, but <laughs> fitting all them fucking syllables, bitch. I just I just get lost. <laughs> 
<laughs> but um right. so it does look very um like look at this white boy you know what i mean like very miley cyrus surrounding mm-hmm. herself with black dancers and all that type of stuff oh but my god don't even he... <laughs> we've gotten past the miley miley has been forgiven of her sins just now do not remind me please <laughs> But I still think about it. I can't. I, it. Okay. I'm just saying. I try not to think about she it. She did that to herself. Um, right, right. But I still listen to Miley Cyrus music now. I've gotten, I don't listen to bangers like that. And I know I'm going to get crucified by a bunch of white gays because of that. But yeah, I don't listen to bangers like that just because it bothers me. But mm-hmm. um, Jay Park put out a, um, I think this was under the comp, the video, which I think the video mm-hmm. is removed now. Oh, what, what the, video did the, he put that under? The, well, like when D- he responded? I think that was under the DNA video. Oh. Because I tried to look up the video before, but I was only seeing re-uploads. So I'm imagining Shout out to was... that person who took a screenshot of his response before he deleted it. Because you know his PR was like, didn't we tell your ass not to put this out? <laughs> so was he lovely. was... He was pretty much addressing the um, controversy regarding that video and Black... and. Um, cultural appropriation and in the in the um it's like maybe five six paragraphs so i'm gonna read all of that but in it there are a lot of good like kind of like makes you think points that he had but also a lot of stuff that is just kind of tone deaf and you know you're kind of missing the point i would put it on the screen but it's like somebody got a screenshot and you can't really even zoom in It, it like loses quality um, when you zoom in, I mean, he made some points about like, you know, we appreciate these artists. We love the blueprint that the original hip hop artists laid out for us. Um, mm-hmm. R&B is like, you know, around the world, even every country has its own style of like hip hop. And, and that's you know? the part that kind of did interest me in his argument was, OK, so, yeah, we know where hip hop originated. We know where it came from. But. And everything that black folks do is just lit, be honest. Like it, it we, I mean, we 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 <laughs> a hard we a hard race to top when it comes to sauce. So yeah. when it when it does become mainstream and it does become global, we got these artists that are touring worldwide, going to Japan, going to Korea, going to all these places. And we can't just sit here and expect for us black folks in america to be the only ones inspired or that enjoy that that type of artistic expression you know what i mean they go all around the world doing this (laughs) like for lack of a better word infecting everybody with their with their (laughs) hip-hop and so i'm ready for the word infection to be used after the last of us season finale just ended but (laughs) we've been infecting people with hip-hop right right so when when i when i think about it I'm like, so it does this start to feel kind of like a weird form of gatekeeping because you go, you you think about how long, you know, people been touring with with hip hop and everything and how people probably, you know, adopted the the look, the style, the sound and have formed communities around that, you know? So one of the things he was saying is that you go all around the world, there's different communities where they appreciate hip-hop and it breeds a type of style it breeds a type of a new you know, new subculture exactly and then you got generations that grow up in that so it mm-hmm. feels weird to be like find something else you know i'm telling this exactly. 17 17 18 year old boy who's grown up his whole life you know be bopping around and i'm telling him that don't feel right to me i need you to be be more korean <laughs> you know? know like i just I agree. I do agree. Yeah, that is kind of weird, especially after so much time, like you said, like it's kind of been, you know, permeated everywhere. So it's like not even really its original form anymore. You know, like, I mean, black people in America aren't doing rap and hip hop, even some of the style, the stylistic choices in the way that K-pop or Korean or Japanese artists are even right. Mm -hmm. Um, Especially when you start talking about the street fashion um, side as well. Um, but as people who enjoy and consume Asian culture, um, in this case, we're talking about K-pop, but we, you know, we have an anime channel. We talk about anime most of the time and anime adjacent, uh, topics. So, you know, aren't we in essence kind of doing the same thing? And I mean, he did yeah. have some receipts in his response about Nicki Minaj and Chun-Li. Oh yeah. He brought um, the receipts out. Megan Thee Stallion. He brought the receipts. Did he say Megan Thee Stallion? He said Megan Thee Stallion. 
Okay, Bang and the Stallion, yes. Um, Nicki Minaj, Wu Tang Clan, which is one of the more the like, Migos. obvious ones. The Migos, Stir Fry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's it's so, it's a, it's yeah, a, it's see. it's around. Like it's not like and nobody. I don't think anybody's saying that just Korean people <laughs> culturally appropriate, just white people culturally appropriate. But I mean, it. I think it's like. <sighs> I almost want to say it, sh it should stay on a person on a person by person. Like how how do you take in this this medium and what's going on, this cultural appropriation or whatever? How do you take it in and how does it affect you in your uh, the way you support this? You know, I feel like if you yeah. really if you really stand ten tones down on it, I can't fault you for feeling away because I see your points that I understand it. But for me, like. I have a tattoo with Japanese characters on it. I'm not ja I'm not Japanese. What is say? What is that? I don't know. It's it's supposed to say youth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought you were saying I don't know what to say. I'd be like, what No, I know talking? like no, I I I looked it up before I got it. I, my auntie is Japanese. Shout out to Kyoko, love you. Um so I have I have people around me to confirm and whatnot. But <laughs> but once but that's me like appreciating, quote unquote the the culture i love um th that's the thing i just love how the japanese language sounds i want to learn it though i have not put the grown big man of, um effort into fully learning it but people look at that the same way i feel like you know like why not just get some english on me <laughs> like i ain't never I'm even been to, to japan out why my like chat isn't coming up over here Cause I see a, a message here. Um, Megan Thomas said it's context and intention. Hold on one second. Um, it's context and intention. I love Bollywood movies and music, but I make sure to be well informed and respectful. It's culture, not costume and entertainment. It's deeper than that. Right. I don't know and, why that's not coming up over here, but yeah. Uh, I, I see it on Restream. You do? Yeah. How you see it? I don't see it. Are you looking at Restream or are you on something? Else? I am. Yeah, I see it. Megan Thomas. I can read it again. You want me to? <laughs> oh, wow. It's not showing up on my screen. Like, if I wanted to click it or whatever, mm -hmm. it's just, like, not showing up for me. Just Maybe because it's I mean, I would... YouTube specific and not other comments on YouTube. No, I mean, I should be able to see it. I don't know. Can you but put anyway. Jay's comment up there from previous? Um, I'm the king of K-pop. Yeah, I see it up here. It's, like, showing for everybody but me. Like, I don't hmm. know why I can't see it. It's so weird, but whatever. If I refresh the stream, I'll cut off. So it is what it is, but I can see it over here. And mm -hmm. hey, Megan. Um, but um, I think that's the important part. Like, I do think that that's how new culture, I mean, the world is expanding, getting bigger. It's a global kind of culture now. I think we're just going to have a global culture. Um, as somebody who consumes, uh, you know, Japanese content and chooses to, you know, I think appreciate it, right? Like I think I feel like I'm not appropriate. I feel like I'm appreciating. No, I feel like you're appreciating. It would be different yeah. if you were walking around here every day in kimonos, like this is your life, <laughs> and you don't know the the first thing about how that. I mean, but wouldn't you. that be would that would that automatically be appropriation though? I feel like if I there's mean, something like, that's tied to traditions and stuff like that, then yes. If it's yeah, maybe sure. just taking a slang word you heard while you were in Korea that somebody made up you know <laughs> yeah like the, the weeaboo calm the weeaboo down kind of culture was what they used to be called i yeah for me i mean it's just an appreciation if i can find a way to authentically um incorporate it into my style and my myself who i very much so am in like my own culture that i'm building then i'll do it if i can't find a way to authentically do it without feeling like you're disrespecting tradition like you said um then i kind of will just I, that's a sign that you should leave it alone right because like, that's my problem with when we take it like i i don't have a problem with my new stuff quote unquote my new stuff when it comes to cultural appropriation stuff that i can build an argument for in my own head that i feel comfortable defending to other people i'm not going to go out here and start arguing why korean girls should start being able to wear bantu knots what you mean you're not going to argue because there is no argument or you're not because there is because none for me because that th these like expect like black hairstyles serve a purpose they have history there's need for it and because it, it's it wasn't looked at as cool or you know right 
the you know something. So wait, so you feel money. like it's not okay for a Korean artist? I feel like to it's not okay. Tonight? Yeah, like that's the thing. Like there's there's levels. It's not like I completely ignore cultural preparation across the board when it comes to K-pop and and just Asian culture in general. Like I don't want to see a Korean boy out here with dreadlocks. I don't want to see a Korean girl out here with bantu knots. You know, I don't want to hear you saying well, nigga. Well, okay. Well, I think most of them know they can't say the N word, but that is the question. Because, I mean, I've even had this conversation with my daughter, like, with box braids. Like, how do we feel about that? Because, um, you know, we talk about XG, whose song I played at the beginning of the show, which if you're catching this later, you will not be able to hear it because I'm going to have to cut it out. Um, but the one of the the girl in the group who is the rapper she's 16 um and she always has braids like they'll have her in box braids cornrows which one for her little her korean hair i just feel like there's too much tension for her hair type i, I don't even know how she stick she not bald head um but a lot of people have a problem with her wearing box braids myself I'm gonna say I'm not gonna lie. I feel some type of way about people outside who aren't black wearing box braids because, for as you know, like you were saying, like as a black woman, like that's not always accepted by us. Like if you go to a certain settings or it's not seen as professional, so the fact that people can just like put it on because it's trendy right now, mm-hmm. and once they take it off, it's not a big deal. Makes me feel some type of way, but I'm still inclined to be like it's not that big of a deal. Yeah, I'm more inclined if it's something that's like like box braids. I don't know the origin. Like I had literally, I just looked it up now, and I did not know this. It's like box braids originally was for slaves to relay to one another certain paths that could be taken to escape to freedom. Oh damn! That. But they didn't even have rat tail combs. Maybe they use. Uh... I mean, that was my first thought, but that really was my first thought. Like damn, you didn't even, I didn't even do middle. that. You can even have them metal rat tail cones with the like edge um smooth and stuff, so you could like really get a crisp line like this. What well, also wasn't nobody modeling for GQ after these hairstyles was done, girl. Like, <laughs> they wasn't I looking mean, like twenty twenty three box braids, bro. Like you getting a crispy part where somebody can navigate with it. Um, Don't play with me. I mean, that's still that's still a feat. Uh, that's all I'm saying. They true. didn't have blow dryers you know they probably broke off all the the um they broke off all the teeth of a fork and used that besides one like you know what i'm saying i know black people salty in like just genius just come up work with what we get like i i believe i'm just impressed myself i have three girls listen (laughs) yeah i couldn't imagine my life without this rack on i'm shook somebody we putting maps in heads i be the look me in parts i'd be like fuck this part okay I'm just saying. Um, but I mean, I but guess I, with that kind of history, it's nice. But at the same time, we're not even using it for that. Th- that's so, that's exactly like, what I was like getting to. Because I like I don't even I didn't even know that. So I'm not going to look at some girl that's not black in box braids and be like, do you even know what that means? Bitch, because I don't. <laughs> you know what I mean? But stuff like stuff that I feel like is just going out of your way. Right. That's the stuff that bothers me. Stuff like blackface. That's never gonna be cool. Now, if you're doing that's black face, never gonna be cool for me. That's never gonna be cool, and I feel like has that should that should be a worldwide PSA by now. But people like to, you know, they like to slide it in the most subtle way, you like even using tanning as like a gate tanning as like a gateway. Because one of my one of the drag queens that I really enjoy, her name is Raven. Raven gets darker every time I see her on camera. Raven I mean, say, is you know, not they, a black but you person. You know, that's what the girls do. I mean, that's less of. I feel like we fight that in america i mean that's less of a k-pop problem because i feel like for the k-pop j-pop standard of beauty for the most part it's still light skin like they just have different oh no it is but that don't mean they don't do it i sent you that video of of them doing oh you did let me yeah yeah uh what was it that group um uh uh Taj and the boys they fully got their whole group in blackface to perform and that was in the 90s Oh, okay, I see it. Oh, see, that was in the nineties, though. But I mean, Ariana Grande see, doing it. In the I was about to say, and that, I'm not. I, that makes me feel awkward too, because Ariana Grande was a white girl. She looked like I, Kylie I feel Jenner like, did. I feel like Ariana Grande is worse. And now she's Asian. Like ultimately, as far as the chat for y'all, who is worse? Is is a K-pop group being put into blackface? 
which hasn't happened since the nineties. I, I I haven't seen I, any. I was about to say, ain't gonna say, ain't gonna say, I'm not, I'm not say standing it. on it. I'm not standing on it. So if I get new information, by all <laughs> means, I don't have no problem changing that statement. But Ariana Grande gets changes her aesthetic based on what what phase of life she in, right? So we know when Seven Rings came out, she was she was black fishing, which we call it black fishing now, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, not black, black face. But it's black fish. Jesse like from um, what's what's that? Um, the Jesse. UK group. The UK group from um, X Factor. They oh, real hey, big. Yeah, you know, I don't know. I don't know them people. No, I need you know to. I, mean? I need to think of this. I mean, but I mean, American artists are still black fish. I mean, shout out to well, Tor- Tori Kelly is mixed. So she's yeah. a different case. But even she came through with the tan look. But I think for her, it was more of the Y two K aesthetic, which. Oh, is is tan skin part of the Y2K aesthetic before I go on this this side connection that I'm trying to make that may not exist? Wait, say that again? It's like tan skin part of the Y2K aesthetic. Like the that's like big right now. Cause I feel like a lot of artists who do the K pop, which we said a lot of K pop and J pop or well K pop more, is in that bag of two thousands music, right? Like yeah. no Rubs, kind of yeah. aesthetic, mm-hmm. like they're they're hanging out, and I'm like, is that part of why when people tap into that aesthetic, they do black fishing and black? I, I think because I feel like they they yeah. they want to they want to pre- present a certain me, image. They want to break the good girl, the good boy vibe. They want to be edgier, and so they adopt that style to produce that. And I feel like that comes with a lot of stuff. <laughs> Like you don't see Korean boys and girls out here probably mean mugging and stuff. Like I mean, let, let me not say that because they're probably. I was all gonna say because Jay Park said that they got struggle and they got right. struggle in Korea. Right. So let me let me chill out. Know. I don't live in Korea, so let me not speak like I do. I'm sure they got hood. I mean, actually, we just we just watched Lookism. I'm sure that's based off of somebody's reality. Right. Yeah, see, it's part of, she said, yes, it's part of, Megan Thomas thinks it's part of the Y2K aesthetic. I think so, but like, I'm so torn on, this is why I'm torn on this, because America turned its back on the Y2K music and sound that we all loved. And right. like- Little Mix, Y2- thank you, Megan. Yes. Little Mix. Y2K That's is cool. coming back as far as fashion. And I think we wanted a sound and now the K-pop people are just in the bag. They in the bag of like Y2K aesthetic music sound, which is, was i feel like i mean i feel like the early 2000s was almost like a black renaissance for music yeah i don't know if renaissance is like the right word but i feel it, like it was it was the heyday i'll say that because right i ain't never like really felt felt music like i did back in the 90s early 2000s to be completely right. honest and now i feel like nowadays. even when even now when music sounds r&b and stuff it's not guaranteed to be a black artist yeah which which how do we feel about that i mean john motherfucking b well because if we're gonna talk about like korean artists biting not only black sound and style we don't have i mean we do we have to have smoke for the white american artists who are like r&b singers now i mean when it comes i always i always in this could be fully a uh, a flaw of mine. I always just see black R and B artists as, and that's probably that's a, that's probably a problem. As more authentic in it, like if, if like when I when I it depends on I I really got to know something about you to really make that statement. But there are some like I would not. I would not second guess a John B. Because <laughs> when I heard his music on the radio, everything in my spirit told me that this was man was black. That he has been through some things. And when I look at the music video, it don't tell me that same story. But I ain't I mean, really never well, had smoke so for John B. But that's it. Okay, then. So we got to leave the K-pop people alone. I mean, if they can pull it off with their voices, then... Oh, yeah. Now, that's enough. the thing. I, I was bopping to that DNA cover. It was... it, it is That is good to me. But it just, like... <laughs> the the visuals man it just it may, it's, it feels cringe like that's that's one thing i listen to i listen to how my body reacts 
You know, like okay. if I turn that shit on and it, and it makes me feel cringe, I don't second guess it. I keep it moving. I chuck up the deuces, whatever. But if I hear a banger, uh-huh. if I hear something that slaps its mama, I don't know how bad it, it got. It got. It got to get real. It got to get uh, aggressive for me to really take <laughs> up the mantle. It do it for me to I mean... stand on a soapbox and condemn a person. It really got to be aggressive. Like it gotta be, it gotta be Jay Park saying, "This is my music. Fuck y'all niggas. Y'all know what y'all talking about. It's just music. Y'all pussy." Blah blah. blah. If it was all of that, then I would feel away. <laughs> I'm about to say, yeah, he didn't do all that, um, right? But I feel like we okay. Before I ask this, I'm gonna read this comment. Um, is the problem we have with it that other races can do it too to reach a level of notoriety and then reject it and go back to their race i.e yes. Miley Cyrus look Miley yes. Cyrus is is hovering around this conversation and I'll be like look Miley be trying to grill you did do some stuff but yes I mean Pink did it I mean Miley Cyrus Ariana did it yeah and I felt the way each and every time but I do agree with Megan though that this is this is the thing right I don't see it as black and white. We, I, there was a, a conversation me and Bree was having on the phone um, about a video I saw when it comes to like black folks in Korea talk about their dating experiences, right? So, yeah. play it because I mean we don't need to like see it, see it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't think. I mean, is. my video is gonna be choppy, but I mean you can play, play, play it in the background if you want, just so people okay. can get an idea of what these people look like. I guess because that's the thing. None of these black folks in this video are unattractive. Like some of these, some of these, I want a little piece. Like, well, come back to America, talk to me. Uh, <laughs> but they were talking about like their experiences in Korea, and there's a lot of stuff that I've seen after seeing this video. I looked up a couple of other ones, and they're kind of the same. Um, the same key points when it comes to that like black folks in korea are kind of you know fetishized and not to a place where they would like see them and be like oh like want to build a life no like like you cute to make out with in a club around my friends but like don't don't think shit's about to get serious over here you know what i mean like you're just like kind mm-hmm. of a commodity over there and that's the thing right. too like that's what that's aware a lot of issues arise for me when it comes to consuming that type of music from Korean people. If that's the vibe, like y'all can love our culture so much. You can want to be us so much or want to, you know, take pieces in and inform your personality or your yeah, art Park around said he it. don't want to be black. So. Right. That's the thing. Like, he don't want to be black. <laughs> and as much as I want to say that's like, that's, that's, that's just touchy in and of itself. Cause I don't want you to be black, but I also don't want you to, want to be black <laughs> i mean like i mean i don't want you i to don't think the problem with appropriation black, is that we right. think you're trying to be our race that's literally the problem it's just yeah, that, that you're yeah. picking what cool parts of the culture you want to use exactly to get rich and but then, then make fun of all the black mannerisms like i watched an interview <laughs> show of these koreans on a talk show like challenging each other to do a black woman like, oh no you know what rolling your neck snapping your fingers moving oh, your hand no. around using slang like they do you know like that's that's where the issues come for me because you don't really truly respect or admire the black person you like the you like the the dopeness of us you know and you want that's, that for yeah, yourself that's, that's super problematic um, it said K-pop, I feel, respects it damn near more so than some black people because as black folks, we don't like our artists long term. Look at Usher in Vegas already. Ooh. Well, what do you think about that statement before we play this video? <laughs> K-pop you, first of all, Usher, I feel like Usher deserves more flowers. Um, I think being in, in Vegas is an honor, though. I don't feel like it's not like now it's not like Liberace anymore like you do a Vegas residency and you could still have much career after that but I definitely feel like yeah I mean Usher I feel like he hasn't gotten his flowers to some descent like why hasn't this man done a Super Bowl that's true like because Usher he's got that done a show with the Black Eyed Peas yeah but it's like he needs his own headlining Super Bowl I mean so- you saw him in Vegas on them skates recently I've seen the clips because, yeah, I've been trying to go see Usher in Vegas in a minute. Because first time it was COVID, second time monkeypox uh, really started percolating when I was trying to go. So, well, I'm going to try again. 
third time's a charm, I'm definitely trying to see Usher in Vegas because that man puts on a show. Okay. He was doing hands, handstands and skates. Yeah. Yeah. Falling and recovering gr- beautifully. Right. <laughs> I'm just saying. You know what I mean? Um, I don't even mind cultural tourism, explore fetish, leave and go home. Okay. Oh, that's a whole nother. Um, let me play this video first and then we can unpack that if you would like, because we both kind of had a reaction to it. Um, <laughs> but before I play this video, I'm going to say now in the chat, my frame's going to be dropping. Don't worry about it. <laughs> listen, to what they said, listen to what they said and don't come in here telling me about dropping frames. You will be blocked. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that goes to the- here. Koreans love black men. Love they love us. If you dating one person, you probably dating five more people behind that. Where are you from and um, how long have you been living in Korea? I am from the U.S. I've been in Korea for two years now. now I'm not going to get into y'all comments either. Hi guys, my name is either. Moon. I'm a truly influencer in South Korea and I come from France. Hi, my name is Brandy from Jersey. What is dating like for you as a black person in Korea? It's all right. I haven't had any issues. It's very diverse. It's the same as the States. So dating in Korea, man, everybody is with the same people. So if you dating one person, you probably dating five more people behind that, to be honest with you. It's a lot of stuff going on out here, but you know, it's it's a fun place. It's a fun place. I think because I've heard like negative things in the past, I'm kind of hesitant in general. Like I'm not really, I am confident in myself, but I'm quite like shy when it comes to dating. So I'm even more shy when I come to Korea because I couldn't suspect like, oh, does that guy like me? Or is he talking about me? Cause I can't really speak Korean. Korean. I can understand like you know Weigook and all of these like words like foreign Not words, moving to Korea and I'm quite Korean. cautious. I wouldn't even yeah, like my friends are like, oh go on that easily. app what about this but it's kind of like what if I face so much rejection or what if like they just like me because I'm black versus actually liking me like I actually had some embarrassing the other day some guy in the club he was like oh I really like Latinas and I was like I'm not Latina and he's like yeah but and I'm like it's not but like you know if you can't get my race right then you already like lose in general i feel like korea is such a couple place like everywhere you go like even here there's so many couples everyone's dating you go to a cafe people are on dates like sometimes they're even just like with their laptop sitting next to each other doing their own thing but they're together i feel more that single being romantic. here and as a black person i don't have the unfortunately confidence to be like oh yeah let me just go up to that guy because the language barrier and in korea it's very obvious that like white is the standard white is like preferred like a lighter shade and if a white girl and a black girl were like standing next to each other I, I feel like nine times out of ten they would choose the white girl because it's kind of what I had to pause there because it was interesting to me that the black guys are like it's fine but then the black woman is like I'm the bottom of the totem pole yeah I feel like well and later in the video that I think that's just a one-off guy to be honest I don't even know if he pops back up I but, thought it was a few of them. Wasn't it like more than one guy? They were like, it's fine, it's great. There was like one and then the guy that was like, he, there's a guy that's like on the fence, but he explains both the bad and the good sides of it. Okay. There was only okay. one guy that was like, shit, I don't know what y'all talking about. Shit, I'm good over here. I get plenty of Korean. <laughs> I mean, that's what I'm saying because like you also see that in not just like Korea. I don't think that's a Korea problem is what mm-hmm. I was going to say because you see that in like Love Island, UK. Right. Like oh, the black definitely. girls don't be getting um perfect match on Netflix. But they also sometimes want to be put in don't nobody crucify me for this. Love Island sometimes oh, no. be putting these girls on here <laughs> that got totally exposed tracks <laughs> don't, you know come what I mean? for UK, don't come for the uk black girls i'm you. sorry uk black girls but you got these these white girls who absolutely got extensions or whatever but <laughs> yeah they be taking them off of the, i mean it is but i'm just like you, like, you, like you, you got these you already you already fighting for the affection of these white folks and then you get in the area where you're surrounded by white girls, and then you come out here as a black girl with your track showing. I just don't, it just doesn't serve you. I well. ju- also feel like, you know, there's a running joke on TikTok that like rich, like white guys love a bad synthetic wig. <laughs> so, like, you gotta, <laughs> so you gotta put on a bad wig to catch their eye, you know? But I just wanted to point out, I don't think that's a Korean problem per se. Like I, you see that that women, black women being like less preferred in other country. He said that actually makes. Don't read the last part. Don't read the last part. We keep going. (laughs) That makes sense. (laughs) 
<laughs> based on perceptions, men don't really care about sexual access. Women ain't going to get the love access at the same rate. It's more like your frame rate sparse. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's like your beard, too. Woo! Shots! <laughs> what they've been shown as popular and mainstream and attractive <laughs> so yeah i mean there are the odd cases where people korean guys are dating black girls but fingers crossed you know yeah you never know because me i don't have a type like i like every black white asian whatever but I'm, i feel like they look at me and that's like the last option i'm married but i have friends and you know i know their story and all but just hearing their story it's complicated it could be real complicated like if you don't have anybody that's loyal and that's really willing to work things out and and, you know go through different things with you it's gonna be complicated you never know if the female have somebody on the side it's complicated why do you think it's complicated being here in a whole nother country it's you have to learn the other language if you if you are willing to date a korean but koreans here hey they good looking for real that's one of the main perks but like i said you have to learn a language and i would say if you know their language to them that that is sexy this year, Bunny Slope will build an e-commerce platform. Done. That whole part about. I found a freelance web developer on fire. Girl having multiple I'll partners. I say it's I'm like 50-50. Like, it's it. either they <laughs> absolutely. What you say again? Sorry. I was just I'm saying the dude that it. was talking about the girl having multiple partners in Korea. I'm like, that's anybody. Yeah, uh, I feel like that's just part of it. <laughs> and shout out to Queen Koya. I know she um she's a Twitch streamer. And she lives in Korea and she's black. And that's something that I'm really looking forward to the day we can actually sync up and talk about because she has a lot to say about that. Oh, um, I love and she that has too. like first hand experience. But like we were trying to link up, but she like started a new job and then I like had to move. And it's just like we cannot for the life of us link up. But um I am hoping to have that conversation with one her with her one day to hear her first hand experience with like being black and dating in Korea. Um let me play the video. Who they disgusted with me or they love me is either one or the other. I'm gonna be honest. Personally, non Korean citizens is like everybody doing them. Like, ain't no relationships out here. Do not come here trying to find a wife. Please do not. Or do not come out here trying to find a man unless they stay inside and they all about themselves and they prove to you that you not look for it. Let it come to you. Please. I'm saving you a lot of heartache. I've been through it already. <laughs> By the first week, by the second week, I was heartbroken <laughs> already. So, yeah, it's, it's a very interesting thing. I'd say it's kind of like hard because, I don't know, I feel like even though Korea is becoming more open, it's still like they still have a lot of stereotypes against black women out here. So they either think we're like really like easy or like down to try like a lot of things or they're like, um, you know, kind of just want to try. I don't know. I feel like they go in with them, like, intentions, and it's kind of, like, awkward or weird. To be honest, I never, ever date a Korean guy. It will be possible, but for me, I'm a tall girl, black. The first thing I noticed when I tried to, when I said I tried to, is, like, flir flirting with a guy, or else I really felt the difference between being a foreigner girl as a black person and also uh, the Korean girls. They, like, separate the both and I was so shocked because I thought about the fact that since when doesn't matter like where you come from or your skin color it should be only like the personality or if yeah if you feel attracted to that person did you say I was since like, when I'm black I'm really tall and I do speak yeah, I Korean know. so I was like trying the both way I don't know she has like a what do you mean like since when does it matter what you look like is what she right said. well she's a since when does it matter the skin tone bitch four, four five hundred years ago but she <laughs> like she's from america yeah but she still. don't sound like she's from america so i don't think I don't, what do you I mean, mean the uk the uk got them same issues she don't sound uk she sound like she's french like maybe she's oh. from like africa or she isn't there africa uh oh yeah they speak or people, haiti uh, or she french sound like she Somewhere they speak French. I'm bad with accents. I, I immediately was like, is that you okay? <laughs> uh, can I switch from uh, black to Korean and use that culture? Um, I think Asian culture is. There are instances of um, like Asian culture being meshed with black culture over here, right? Like we kind of talked about. Like Nicki Minaj's whole aesthetic was like Harajuku inspired. Right. I mean, it I mean, she she right? she does, especially more recent. She's definitely been into the whole Chung Lee, which that's culture appropriation because she don't know who the fuck Chung Lee is. 
I get so irritated when I hear that song. Wait, hold she on. Was like, Why you got so mad? Wait, you said <laughs> you don't know who Charlie is? Could Nick, that, like that, it's just it's a small problem I have, huh? I, I was telling you, if you're on YouTube watching this, drop a like, drop a like. Let's get oh, some yeah. traffic, please. Absolutely. I mean, but it's not it's, that many, but you know. <laughs> it's just uh that one song, I wouldn't have a problem with if she was like, now I'm the bad guy, Chung Lee. Chung Lee ain't no bad fucking bad guy. She's 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 Interpol. That she's is a, annoying. She's, 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 the, yeah. she's the good guy on the show. But that's a whole show. like, And that's what I'm saying. Like, It feels, I mean, when you start thinking of all the instances of people taking culture and using it to commodify it, to like appeal to a certain crowd. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, I feel like America has way more bad examples than Korea because I don't even think Korea, like, yeah, now girl groups and like pop groups are going worldwide and like BTS is touring, touring in like other countries. But I feel like for the longest, they was just over there trying to appeal to Korean, other Korean people. Um, yeah, I, I mean, because like, half them dances, you ain't going to catch a lot of niggas in, uh, in the U.S. doing the fucking caramel dancing uh, dance. <laughs> you know that dance? Do I got to get on camera? And no. Do it? You finna get on camera and do it? it? It's literally, it ain't nothing. It's a, uh, hold on. Uh, I was just going to pull this thing down so you can, I'm put you on the big screen. Can y'all see me? Mm, yeah. Ooh, what's this camera? This huh? must not be the right camera. I don't know. That's just my internet. That's just my background. But you know the no. like mm-hmm. in my room. Okay, that's what it's called. Yeah. Yeah. But like that, that and like a bunch of different like dances like that that were very popular in a lot of J pop. Yeah. You know, yes. a lot of K pop. I mean, a lot of TikTok culture to me is very as somebody who has been into like subcultures of Japan and stuff since. I was like 15. I mean, back in the day, you had the Korean, which was a Korean aesthetic, the Ulazong, uh aesthetic and stuff like that. And mm-hmm. like, it's all about taking pictures and being like camera, just looking the best you can on camera, like making your face slimmer. And I just feel like TikTok and a lot of that is literally that same culture I was witnessing back in like 2005 you know what i mean so i feel like a lot of the tiktok culture is even inspired to me by like how aesthetic asian culture has always been mm-hmm. um they've always been very like into aesthetics i find so i mean it seems that way to me he said there were three k's on that f word just like just now because <laughs> like, that that like that just that that type of stuff irritates me because there's a difference for me between uh Nicki minaj and a Megan Thee Stallion when it comes to that type of appreciation, you know what I mean? Because yeah, one of these, Stallion one of these people, likes- exactly, mm-hmm. they're aware, they're into it, they have favorites, <laughs> they can they can chat with you, they can hold a conversation. If all of a sudden Nicki Minaj dropped a bar that was like some some Goku, blah, blah, fuck him like he's Sasuke, when I would I- be irritated. Cause I feel like Nicki Minaj definitely just saw Chun Li somewhere and was like, "Oh, I like her." She liked the bunk because like Chun Li's a bad bitch. She's thick in the thighs. She is. She whoop she people's is. ass. Like I can't blame her. Like I can. She, and Nicki Minaj kind of, kind of looked good as Chun Li. Not like Megan, but <laughs> you know, I'm, I, say, I'm not. A, I'm not a Nicki stan, but I, I appreciate what Nicki did for the culture. I mean, that first run, Absolutely. the first, the first segment of Nicki was all hair as you inspired. I mean. Mixtape Nikki, your first album Nikki is some of my favorites. I do like some Nikki Bops. Don't get me wrong, from from then until now. But as a whole, I'm like, I mixtape first album Nikki. That's my that's my sweet spot with her. Is that? I mean, and that's. I mean, she's gotten older, but I mean, so that's appropriate. I mean, Nicki Minaj is basically done the opposite of what we're saying. The K-pop and J-pop artists. Yeah, are. definitely. Um. So, I mean, and now that blurred culture is more of a thing that you can identify, you see artists doing that, like using a blurred culture to try and like, you know, appeal to certain people or blow up. So why did my chat thing just like do weird stuff over here? Like, are we still live? Oh, I feel like your your side is really freaking out. I'm Gucci over here with restraint. No, because like there's like the chat thing, and then there's like the chat on the other side where I control the graphics and the captions and stuff. Uh-huh. And like it literally just disappeared. Huh. That's so weird. I don't know what's I've happening. I've been seeing anyway. both of those this whole time. Oh, you can? You can still see it? Mm-hmm. Okay, okay well, let's see if what, what's the problem. So first, uh, if I talk with a guy, I can feel like really okay to speak in Korean, okay to speak in English. But then when I saw that some of the guys that I wanted were like 
not really into it. I really felt directly what was the problem, only my skin color and where I came from. And you just made mention as like you're tall. I can, I can see that. Like how tall are you? Uh, 182 centimeters. So how would you, you know, say your experience has been being like a tall black woman, like in the dating community in Korea? I think I'm a little bit out of it. <laughs> like for one, I haven't really dated in Korea, but I do recognize a huge difference, uh, especially as like working in the club area seeing the way how black men and you know women he demons, are yeah. viewed and dealt with versus how like other <laughs> ethnicities specifically like white people most of the time that i see like interracial couples is mostly like korean and white whereas a lot of times as black people are seen as like fetishized or like a fun time you know so i don't really see serious relationships with us just like someone making out with like a black person or for me people always telling me like oh you're so hot your body's so hot blah 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 but like no one ever like going like the next step to create a relationship it's just right there in the moment would you say you know like dating for you it's a lot easier or like it's just i don't know, like a lot harder like how, how would you you know like read it personally it's a lot harder just because i'm mainly pro black so i literally have to step outside of my comfort zone like to even talk to them because i'm pro black i mainly date black women that's just that's just my thing i'm from alabama I'm from the south that's that's just what it is where i'm from you know i find that statement slightly problematic I mean, I don't know what he's doing in Korea, but you're in Korea. So that's what I was saying. In my head, I literally was having the same conversation. I was like, Is you stationed I was like, there? How you, how you pro black in you? <laughs> right, in Korea. Because all like of you your dollars were like there. literally leaving America and the black community. Okay, so it wasn't yeah, I, I, was, I was a little confused <laughs> about like how you both. Um, Yella said, uh, I'm gonna get me one of them robes with the really long sleeves. Kimono, see, Yella's right. going to know for appropriation. That's why I was like, Yella, um, that's full of appropriation. You know, your ass ain't, ain't <laughs> out here trying to dive into even, the history of the kimono. He don't even know what it's called, but I'm gonna put it on. Um, I'm on one of them Asian robes. What they call <laughs> that's racist. <laughs> um, so what are they saying is Pratt passport bros to Korea? No, he said don't go there to get a wife, so I don't think they would. And he said he know he lied. Yeah, I don't know how you talking about I'm pro-black in in whole ass Korea. Right. That's, That's what I'm saying. He had to be like stationed there or something. Like my sister's in Korea yeah. right now against her mm -hmm. wheel. <laughs> Right. I'm like, maybe he's in the military. We'll give him a pass. But to me, that's kind of weird. Like, right. I'm pro black, but here I am in Korea dating. And wasn't he the same nigga oh, that said he got his heart broken in two weeks? As long as you know a little bit yes. of Korean, they know a yes. little bit of English. It's like, y'all yeah, can make it work. So one of, one of the first things that I heard from basic training was Koreans love black men. They love us. They bold here. They yeah, like they really are bold. That yeah, sounds yeah. really you keep nasty. It you keep it pee. Everybody sound like a gravitate tape. towards you. It sounds you know? like a the only tape time you it's really got hard from to like... date out here is if you secluded, if you stay by yeah, yourself, like, you stay in the room, good, and you're not a person that really likes to go out. It's gonna be hard for you. So how would you say the dating culture in Korea is different from that of America? I would say like the dating culture here in Korea is very love bomby and it's like very like fast paced my friend went on two dates and then after the guy wanted to be like her boyfriend and i'm like what you know so i think in america oh, like yeah, do you know how many you know, you have to holidays they have to celebrate love you them, jesus you could be christ like, I, I didn't like realize they were so like lovey-dovey because she's have... like every time you go out there's just like couples everywhere yeah i think um, i think another guy's gonna get into it but they have like so you get together then you celebrate Two two, which is like you've been together twenty two days, then you celebrate your, I think one month, and then you celebrate a hundred days, then two hundred days, then three hundred days. I think they do hundreds like we do years, and then uh, you know we because we don't like, we've been together a year, or two years. They do a hundred days, and then there's also like Damn. three different. There's three different Valentine's days. There's like Valentine's well, like the Day. Pace, the pace of dating and changing partners is so fast. You can't even count years. You got to be like, you made it a hundred days. Hello? Like that like, for real, that part. And then when you think about it, because it's such a, <laughs> that's my type of relationship. <laughs> yeah, that's stupid. <laughs> they, uh, they, they're, because that's the, I think the mindset around there, it makes it even more sad when you think about it coming into a space that's all Korean, especially if they have any type of grievances against, not grievances, but like uh, 
what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, preferences to uh-huh. white or Korean, it lowers your chances more drastically because they like, I'm not wasting 22 days on you, nigga. I know. <laughs> I'm going to kiss it's you in like this crazy. club I mean, and move on. <laughs> but come on, I'm going to call it now. I know they were talking about being fetishized. Is that uh-huh. the word? Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So you are we ready to have that conversation? We can because I'll stand up in my truth. Stand in your truth, King. I'll stand in my truth. I, I think <laughs> Korean men are beautiful. When I tell you, I think... Korean men are some like <sighs> uh, I, I'm, okay. just, I'm sorry I just had a flash of six different <laughs> <laughs> K-pop <laughs> idols that I salivate over on the daily and I oh. stand in it that's why my name on this is Antoine House of House Hypocrite because they, they, well actually there's a slight difference you see how he was saying that they kind of like fetishize us in a way where it's like you know, make out with you in the club, or if we haven't gotten to that, right. to that part, like me, my, mine goes a little different. I I, I use the word fetishize because it's, it's it's taboo. I think it's funny sometimes, you know, especially when it's that drastic of a situation you're comparing yourself to. But like, I just say that in a sense of I think some of those men are very, very, very beautiful. I love the way Korean men take care of themselves. I love the way they Ooh. they. Can they you say that? Hold on. Can you repeat that sentence, please? I said I love the way that Korean men take care of themselves. How they be taking care of themselves? Because I, I know some it. of the people listening may not know what that means. Like they, they, when I tell you, Korean people go in on their skincare routines, Definitely. like their their health, like the workout habits of a Korean person. I feel like majority of the people in Korea, if you like lump their workout routine <laughs> versus their self and their <laughs> self care versus black right. folks here. Uh-huh. <laughs> you're gonna get two different you're gonna get two different sets of data you know what Rashad i mean is pouring up his drink right now no uh no they do take care of themselves but go ahead i just wanted to pause they really do so i don't know it's i just i just really i think like they're like i don't know i just really think korean men are attractive i'm not saying i love them any more than <laughs> yep it was of course it was it, was. it, was. it was shay but it I, was. I mean I don't I'm I'm not a hundred percent like no, I don't think blanket fetishes I can't say that word fetishizing people <laughs> is good, but mm-hmm. like I don't think there's anything wrong that if you're experiencing a new culture in a new space and like it's so foreign to you, Being like if you're stepping out it. Yeah, like you're stepping outside of your race and probably means like depending on where you grew up, if you grew up around mostly people who look like you, I mean what's pushing you to date these other races like it has to be some kind of curiosity about dating other right. races because there are a lot of black people who never date another race ever in their life so i feel like if you're already in that where you're like thinking about dating another race there has to be some curiosity that you have but i'm never gonna come about from it i'm never gonna come from it from a way that feels kind of like and I, from a lack of a better word disgusting than like you seeing somebody in the club want to make out with them because of their race and how it will look to people around you and then drop them the next day like if i get a if me and this korean boy hit it off oh we gonna get married like we we in a but that's the the problem i mean well i think that's the difference because like i think there's a difference between like being open to like whatever this turns into but i think what they're saying is a lot of them just want to experience things exactly kissing a black person and that's where i separate myself from i separate myself from that because that's not yeah. what I'm about. Like, I, I, I feel weird sometimes saying that because people look at me crazy when I'm like, oh, Korean men, is so fine. But it's not like I'm like, ooh, let's just get a piece and then I'm, a, you know, that's it. I'm going to play with their feelings and move on. Like, no, that's not what it is. I'm genuinely attracted to them type of people. To, and do you to, think, it, I mean, you know, do you think it's bad? I also want to know in the chat if you're listening. Like, do you think it's bad to be curious about another race or a group of people and just be like, damn, I really just kind of want to know, like, I feel like it's a little it, dehumanizing it, for sure. Because it's like they're human. I, it feels weird to me too because right. I'm just like, well, if they have a peen or whatever whatever genital genitalia you looking for, there is still a human. It's not like, you know what I mean? Like they're still human. So like mm-hmm. even having this thought of this going to be so drastically different because they're race. Versus some partners are just going to be good partners or some aren't going to be good partners. And I don't think it matters about their race. But I think chalking it up to their race is where the problem is. Um, yeah. He said, I fetishize black women, so I can't be mad. <laughs> That's an interesting take, <laughs> to be honest. Because you don't think about that. When you go, when you I in your own race, you don't think about it as fetishizing. You think of it but as yeah, I guess. So does it work the other way? 
like only wanting to be with your own race is in essence fetishizing your own race yeah either that or you uber racist to everybody around you. <laughs> <laughs> i guess so yeah i'm joking no, I, I mean if you really think about that because you think that there's some superiority of that that race of partners then or maybe another race or it could just be the simplicity of it because we can't sit here and and pretend like if you date somebody outside your race or religion that it's not going to be difficult that you're not going to have conversations that there's not going to be right. adjustment period that you're not going to have a have to have a level of maturity and communication about you to make it succeed so a lot of people could just see it as easier we come from the same background yeah. we, we understand each other we we get the dialect we don't have to ex over explain things so that's also another reason in, to be in behind it yeah, me personally like i'm not a person that's going to limit a relationship off those things I'm a person that is a very much so open-minded. Like I, I would like to learn about different people's religions. I would like to learn about people's cultures and how they live and how they navigate stuff like dating. Like I wouldn't be completely off-put by the whole <laughs> 100 day, 200 day thing if I like right. felt my partner was super excited about that type of thing. You know what I mean? Because I want right. to learn about those things. Yeah, I think it's just like a curiosity, like curiosity getting to know them. Um, he said only had one Wahite girl, had her whole life messed up. I'm pro up a little. <laughs> no, no. Why am I not I'm pro about up that? a little. Sure is, but they're not ready to hear that part. Pro black only dating is weird. Yeah, I've just never been that person. Um, I never for the most part was just like only black men or only this or that. Like, of course, I mostly dated black men because of proximity. Like, you know, you're growing up in black areas or whatever, I mean, you're gonna date predominantly your race. I don't think that's weird, um, but I was always open to it. So I never had that. Cause if she can roll up, she can be indigo blue. You trying to date a guy. Um, let's finish this video. I, I pulled it down cause Twan was talking about his fetishization of the whole serial idols. killer. And you're trying to date me after a week, you know? I don't want to say the aggressiveness of dating, but like a lot of it, it's in comparison to the States, it's a bit more commercialized and aggressive because you have like the celebration of 100 days, 200 days, three, four, five, whatever. And then you have Pepero Day, Valentine's Day, White Day, and Black Day. And like so many other like things surrounding dating as far as like commercial wise. American Whereas in the never. States, you have Could, Valentine's you know how much Day, money anniversary. Is. And in some states, you have this thing called Sweetest Day, which is like in October. So it's not like a significantly less amount of like celebrations and stuff happening on a couple like level and stuff so it's very different in that regard and then you also have like the pressure of like everybody it's like such a regular question to hear here oh do you have a boyfriend do you have a girlfriend or why aren't you dating whereas in the states the only time you'd hear that is either from like old people or somebody that's like wanting to date you so when i hear people asking me like oh do you have a girlfriend why don't you have a girlfriend my immediate Immediate thought is they must want me <laughs> it's like no it's just a regular question that people ask here because that's how prominent dating is in this country what is your ideal type it's like my height or taller than me with uh, long hair so I like long hair guys the height is the most important if he has long hair I'm happy if he doesn't it's okay and then the personality for sure what if it's shortening you I don't discriminate like I can have maybe a crush on him but if I just judge on the appearance I will not like turn around for a shorter guy because I will think he's not attracted to me too what is one advice you would actually give to you know like all the people of color or the black people come to Korea you know like wanting to date like what advice would you give to them keep it P my main advice is make sure you're ready what does that mean make sure you have some knowledge no when it comes to relationships if you come to South Korea no need to look for someone to date just enjoy the country if you find your love like God bless if you don't it's not like the end of the world really don't lose any self-esteem here try to understand who you need and who you are first like your value and if these people don't accept you like you are as you are just don't try to push them and don't try to this word sally i couldn't do it um <laughs> i was like girl i don't know when, when um, our and it started unmaking sense <laughs> it, it did i was like what's keep it p what does that mean yeah i, don't, I have no idea keep it Pleasurable? Keep it, keep it 
keep it pushing keep it pushing keep it pushing keep it pushing that actually might be it that feels why not right. just say pushing though yeah i don't know anyway pushing um is, oh that's perk probably huh <laughs> i like it uh it's like a constant focus on dating yeah i think they're just more of a pairing off society which america honestly could use more of because we probably gonna go extinct at this rate i don't think I mean, americans are really to be honest now sh she's not korean but my my aunt um she's japanese and i feel like there's a lot of similarities because just watching that back does provide a lot of context to the way my aunt would navigate and hearing my uncle complain about a lot of things she would do or expect out of the relationship like it makes a lot more sense like maybe yeah so, sorry I don't know if you're watching this I'm putting your business out there but um <laughs> there was a lot of like togetherness like she she definitely was one that I feel like a normal dude would considering uh hover, hovering you know like she like needy. Yeah, because uh, right, because like maybe you like your own space, so you in another room, or you work a lot, but then when you come home, you don't want to be like all around somebody. Sometimes you know, mm -hmm. with your space, but for her or for them, like I haven't seen you for like nine, ten, eleven hours. Like right. I think it should be expected that we immediately start spending time together, or we do something together, or we go out. Especially if you're used to celebrating a relationship and your other partner. I'm not to say all those holidays. I can hear the American men right now rolling, like just groaning right. and like, oh my god, like it's so many days. Because like honestly, I can go to what they celebrate twenty two days we've been together. I can go our first twenty two days from my first date. Our second date can be at twenty two days. <laughs> to be honest with you, i'm what? like i ain't gotta talk to you for that long like i mean I, I, that, that's not my norm heavy. that's not my it's norm. like three weeks that's not my norm but if i'm busy i'm busy you got a life i got a life if you too big to see me within three weeks you too busy today just be busy hey, and, by that's, and that's probably why those scenarios haven't worked out to this day but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just I'm, be, I'm just saying just that's not yourself that's not a a norm for me but i'm saying like i'm a type of person who mm -hmm. i'm not out here looking for somebody to complete me i'm not out here looking for somebody to bring something to my life that i don't have i'm I, if i date and if i'm interested in a person i want it to be natural because i vibe with you because we you know you know it just it it connects on that level i'm not looking for some some something mm -hmm. from somebody in that way so like i i don't need to see you every day like especially if oh, we boy. dating like i can text you we can call we can talk every now and again but like if you want to see me every two days every three days yeah, no, that's, that's like i'm gonna go ahead and much. yeah that's not gonna happen that's way too much yeah like, yeah i'll see, see you next blue, blue moon. moon next blue moon uh, y'all i mean that's actually terrible let me wrap this back into why we brought this up why we why we <laughs> said this way into the dating well because we were talking about appropriation and like are these k-pop artists are korean people in general consuming i hate that word consuming blackness black people i don't like that i just don't like how it feels when i say it but um like appreciating the music and like how do they feel about black people in general as far as dating and like my understanding he said Twan, right man he is. is problematic and he is very and <laughs> i'm, I'm not commitment perfect. issues without saying you got commitment issues. i am not a perfect person listen <laughs> when i do get in a situation where somebody is i i i cater to that i'm a, i'm i would like to say i'm malleable how about that what uh, i'm not gonna do is i'm not gonna uh, see you every two days i'm not gonna do that no, I that's a lot. Not. Unless, that's unless, a lot for unless we really hit it off and this is a relationship that I just think is like, oh my God, where has this been all my life? Maybe then I get swept up in it. Right. But I'm, and number one, I'm also not going to make excuses not to see you either. Like if, if we, if we went on a first date, it was great. You want to go on a second date in like three days? Cool. Let's do that. But like, I don't do Generally the, for yourself. Yeah. You don't need to see anybody. No, I like it to be known. Okay. I like my space. I am not a person that is overly clingy, overly like touching on you. What are you doing? Blah, blah, blah. Like I can hold a conversation. <laughs> we can get to know each oh other. My I'm, I'm a person that likes to take stuff slow. And if I got to be single burn. forever, I'll do that. Because when I, the times that I have sped it up has been the times where I got burned the hardest. <laughs> so Rashawn said it sounds reasonable to him, which means it's toxic. Um, yeah, yeah, let's say because most of these days over here would be geared towards women. Some of those days, some of those days, maybe specifically for men, I don't think American women can handle making a lot of days. It's about the couple, yellow. It's about all of them days he listed was the 
we're a couple. It's couple days. That's the problem with you Americans. Y'all, it's always got to be about one person or the other. All of those love days are about love itself. So it's not about the man or the, it's about the couple in love. See, that's what's wrong with y'all. Um, Megan Thomas said we need to unpay that. We do. Yeah, we don't have been, to sit on the couch. I ain't been to a therapist yeah. before, but I'm into it. <laughs> say it's I like, like hearing about myself. Couch. So, I mean, but based off what we saw, it sounds like a lot of them are just like willing to have experiences with black people. But I'm not, I mean, would it be out of pocket to say they're appropriate, appropriating black people? Uh, dating like dating black people almost like cherry picking like I want to smash you or make out with you but that's it I'm never going to marry you I'm not going to be in a committed relationship with you is that some form of appropriate I mean it's fetish, fetish just, uh, whatever that word is I don't know I feel like but you like, muddy the it, waters when you throw in appropriate because I don't know how that really I mean it's not appropriation you can't appropriate people, yeah but like yeah. I mean it still feels like the same energy is what I'm saying yeah, like I guess. You, yeah, like, yeah. Take the experience you want to have with these people and not really true and not dive in all the way. Yeah, I can see. Yeah, that. yeah. I don't think that's appreciation. I don't think that's appreciation either. Yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. I don't There's think that's appreciation. I mean, that. yeah, I don't feel like it's appreciation. I don't know what appreciating a black person would look like per se. Because there think- is no way I would make a conscious decision in my brain and act on it to be like oh there's this fine asian person over there let me just go over there and have a great like you know little night have people see me like i would that wouldn't be my thought process so i'm gonna go over there it's because i'm interested and i want to start something you know what i mean yeah but they limit i mean but that happens though no it happens i mean shit happens in america i go out to a gay club because i ain't got no six pack i will definitely not get chose you know what i mean (laughs) i mean but is that like a preference thing but then you because get. I mean, the, I, be, but I feel like when you start, yeah, when you start dating, yeah, when you start dating other races, it definitely is a thing. Even in America, like some of them just, I've never been. If you go out and you're like, I've, I've never been a black girl, I'm leaving. Yeah. I'm leaving. I'm not trying to be that for you. Yeah. I mean, unless, well, we, y'all don't need to know about me. <laughs> but, nah, nah. If I gotta unpack <laughs> shit, bitch, you unpack. Y'all don't too. need to know about Get me. Get them suitcases but, out. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know what I'm saying? We gotta unpack me. Unless both sides mutually feel like, you know what, check, check box situation, then it's not okay. It's not okay to make someone feel like you about to have this potential relationship or you're actually courting them and you have no intention of it because yeah. you're just curious. Like, that's not okay. That's all I'm saying. Not the side eyes. Uh, yeah, a culture. all I'm saying or... is I'm going back and watching this episode and I'm listening to that cutoff sentence and I'm forming my own narrative if you don't clear it up. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just clear it up. I just say if both sides feel like they just want to explore and they're both consenting adults to like, we ain't trying to, re- oh, let's be real. I'm not taking you home to my parents. You not taking me home to yours. But we just here for what we here for. I think two grown people can decide they want to do that. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, it ain't like I ain't never had no one night stand, but I, I don't know. It's, it's, it's icky when you start to specify off of race or off of yeah you know i mean because for me as somebody who dated other cultures i never looked at people as their race per se like it was of course they're obviously a different race right but it's more they're of a different culture if that makes sense like culture is not race mm-hmm. so like it, it, even when dating people who were like hey me shogun even when dating people who are other races, I ne- it was never really as much as a race because you don't experience race. Like you experience culture, if that mm-hmm. makes sense. So yeah, like, you race it never was, <laughs> it, it wasn't really about the race. Like I'm experiencing your culture. So I don't know if it's, it just seems weird to me to be like, I'm going to smash this person because they have brown skin as if that's going to, are they going to taste like chocolate, bitch? Like, what? Oh, my God. I'm just saying, it offers nothing. Like, race does nothing as far as, like, I want to experience this black woman because what do you think is going to happen? Right. Is it going to be brown when it comes out? It is. It's going to be brown. <laughs> is it like chocolate milk? That's what I'm saying. Like, that's, that's elementary to me. You know what I mean? 
<laughs> but you can experience the culture of someone because black women move a certain way and tend to dance a certain way and and you know that now that's the culture of black women that will maybe give you a different experience in the bedroom right than mm-hmm. some of their counterparts so it's the culture of the person that brings a new aspect that you you may be curious to experience not their skin color if that makes sense no it does okay i can appreciate a group or solo artist that appreciates our culture enough to study and pay homage homage without outright jacking i mean but that's like a lot of room to still steal though but i I do feel like like it should I feel like people should go out of their way when they're influenced to that level when you change up your whole artistic style because you can see there's like artists and groups that were the bubblegum you know cute image and then they see the Ariana takeoff. Grande yeah and then they see the takeoff of these different subgenres and these different genres and they want to adopt that and all of a sudden they hard they you know mean mugging left and right blah 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 like that's what that feels like to me mm-hmm for sure um if you <laughs> if you tell me chinese women taste like beef egg foo young i'm leaving the country right now and that would be racist that would be very <laughs> racist that would be very racist if a person told that me would that be I, 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 I would not associate myself with you too much more i would not associate right they're not gonna <laughs> taste different because it's like that's where it becomes problematic for me but if you're like you know, they see we saucy. They be like, I see how black women be moving. Yeah, you know, like I can't. How that's gonna interpret? Don't tell me y'all don't see. There's nobody on God's green earth who would ever see Meg the Stallion dance Ugh. and be like, "Ooh, I bet." Listen, she is amazing. Listen, and be you. You turn. You turn. You can't. You turn on some prime, and you see what these what these <laughs> these uh, people of color are throwing down in the bedroom. I can't also blame you for not wanting for get one to get a piece. But I don't need it to to be this icky thing where you're just hyper focused on. I mean, just say that though. I I just feel like honesty is the best policy. I don't agree with you you manipulating someone and to think, oh yeah, I totally want to date you and I'm looking for a and the whole time you got this devious plan that you just want to smash and see how it is. Okay, wait, honest. quick question for you, Bree. What is what is a what is probably one of the more attractive uh, races outside of your own? Because I have a follow-up question. Outside of my own? Hmm. Yeah. A sweeping See, generalization. Really... That's so hard for me. Because I don't feel like I have... I can well, pick, if you can think of, of a celebrity that's every not one. black. I can think of, I can Give think me of a one, really hot celebrity different. that's not black. Give me a really hot celebrity that's not black. I mean, Henry Cavill... Cool. So Henry Cavill walked up to you and was like, "Like I don't want to be like weird or awkward right now, but like I'm trying to see if that shit tastes like chocolate milk." <laughs> well, I was your like, it did. I was like, "Well, you're gonna be disappointed, it doesn't." It, it, but if you just if you just wanted to say you want to smash black girls just to have experience, well, I mean, I would want to just smash Henry Cavill to just say I smashed him. So I mean, okay, her. So it's a, we it's can a link mutual. Up on that. <laughs> <laughs> mutual, you ain't got to do all that. If you just want right. to have experience, you can just have experience. That's all I'm saying. Like, I'm not I don't know. I politically would, honestly, correct I in would, that way. I would feel you weird. You don't need to finesse me. You don't need to finesse so me. Weird. If somebody came up Sorry. to me and told me they wanted to smash me just because I was black, I would feel very weird. Okay. But they probably me, have me, reason. Right, like, me personally. Not judging if, you. If there was a me. cultural reason. If there was a cultural reason. Like, there are, there are cultures in the world that have people say they're good lovers or they have a a, like you know what I mean like their reputation as coming from this culture makes them good lovers we have examples of that do we not yeah sorry (laughs) just sorry I'm I'm sorry but like we have we have examples of that so I don't think it's that weird if you think about it that way okay like there's cultures that have a thing where people say they probably good lovers because of some cultural aspect they have I don't think it's it I don't think that's weird. I guess, but maybe it's just the the way you brought it up to me. Italian, like if, like thank if you. you. <laughs> like black women be twerking, so they be like, ooh, I ain't never seen a girl move like that. I'm I'm trying to smash a black woman because y'all be moving and I wanna see how that translates to the bedroom. 
Okay, I may you 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 get me more on that side. But if I if I did any kind of a search and saw your ass on Twitter back in 2019 talking about some of these jigaboo women. Yeah, see, no, no, you can't be racist. <laughs> like you, you, you can't be racist and then just be like, because now you give a slave master, you know, snatching up women. That's, but that's what I'm saying. You don't know that, so like, that, those are the things that I think about in my brain. I'm like, where is this coming from? Are you just some sheltered white kid that want to touch some little piece of black just to get some variety <laughs> up in your in your list? You know, see, he said Italian, French, Jamaican. Call me Supergirl, racial dating tier list, channel band. Look, listen, <laughs> that's I'm about foolish that. enough that's to do what I was it. Laughing about at. foolish enough Bitch. to do it. Okay, we're not doing that, but who goes to the bottom? I just Let's do it on Twitch. We can do it on Twitch. <laughs> Let's not do it on YouTube. Let's do it on Twitch. <laughs> I want to know who on the bottom. That's, that's all I want to know. Oh no! See, that's the thing. I'm not putting nobody. Even if I, even if I'm not attracted, ain't nobody. Going everybody to gonna be in here. the middle, right? Everybody in the middle. Everybody gonna be seated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's racist, especially if you actually never experienced anything. So right. I mean, asset asset twerking and be on top for thirty seconds. Struggle, struggle mid. What? All that twerking and then be on top for thirty seconds. Struggle oh. mid. But you wouldn't know until you experience you it. You wouldn't, right? even though I have Easy. experienced that letdown many a times. Okay, I so can't tell exactly. You. That is some frustrating shit. What is it that <laughs> hard? Look, like, keep in mind, I'm yes. speaking from a place it where I don't have. Stamina. But like, it takes stamina. We know the stats. We know the stats. Don't do it at all. Okay, I'm, okay. I'm gonna they, speak. They be the real road. life groaning and being like. Ugh. I'm going to speak for the heteronormative couples on this side. We know how the stats for as far as how many black women really out here working out. Okay. After a certain <laughs> age, the med, the style your knees wear off. Okay. And only the gym is going to keep you that stamina. Okay. Lean body. back and use your hands. For support, <laughs> you ain't gotta be out here levitating over it. We got the uh, when I worked at labor and delivery, we had these bars that you could put on the bed to help support the people. It like literally grow, goes across the bed like a hand bar. I was like, y'all need that for y'all beds. Yeah, like, and it, you know, ain't it ain't just the it ain't just the the uh, <laughs> it's the heifers too, Yella. <laughs> the what? I, I, he said it. These heifers lazy twat. I'm like, it's the heifers too. Because I'm speaking People, from experience just, as well. Most Americans are lazy. Look, listen, that's all I'm saying. So, I, I mean, but yeah, in that way, I don't think it's weird. Like, I'm, I just think people want to be coddled, but it's gonna be some people out here who probably want to smash you because some aspect of your culture gives you a, a reputation of being an automatically good lover or whatever, and that's just not true. Mm. I mean, that's not true, but that don't change the reality right 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 like all french people ain't gonna be good kissers right you know what i mean i mean you might look up though with with if you're looking for the size comparison because that's one thing i'm a some spent in towns we we got that um, okay. <laughs> we so, okay. that so, but you sitting over here <laughs> acting all so like oh my god i feel some type of way about it no so really like, you was like really okay i'm trying to because we know y'all got be okay so we being we fragile now we can't Absolutely. handle it i'm just what i'm saying is i can acknowledge that that there might be some stereotypes that have some validity to it you know but at the same time i can understand that and still feel the way if you approach me with it that's just me i feel like i can i can acknowledge so is there any appropriate like, way that you could be approached with it though yeah if you just if you if we in a like keep in mind i'm not no prude like i get right. down but <laughs> if somebody came up and we was having a conversation specifically of my uh members um size that's a different conversation than being like oh i heard them black folks got got a big thing down there like that that just it's odd to me it feels no, weird. I, why would they say it like that that's what that was the example i asked you how you feel <laughs> if he came up to you and was like i'm trying to see what you know like overtly no, telling you that's the situation like and you, you even it. said you even said i want to get down with a black girl why would you want to do no, that no when you said no i said if he would have came up to me with that whack ass chocolate milk line it would have been over it's a wrap but you did say that he, he was like if you just let me know what it is up front like i want to get down with a black girl like that that's still just like i've never i've you? never experienced a black girl and i've never experienced henry cavill so what's the issue then you ain't got to tell me that what you can do is ask I'm me. Saying, other stuff. I'm just saying, like that would be know. my response. Because it's gonna make me response. feel away. I don't want to know. That would be my response. You've never seen a black girl. I've never seen Henry Cavill. It sounds like we got mutual <laughs> uh, Henry Cavill. out of this. <laughs> Not this one person. <laughs> 
<laughs> he's, he's talking about millions of black women. He ain't never experienced. Well, I'm never the black woman he's talking person. to today, though. I'm, I'm the black woman he's talking to today so in this moment. And this black girl right here is with the shit. Okay? So I would have a retort back for and I'm gonna let you have that. I'm just saying, if I'm you're gonna approach saying. me, don't make it strictly about my race. Cause I'm not gonna do that with a Korean dude. I just sat here and told y'all, I think them niggas is beautiful. But I'm not gonna go up to somebody and be like, oh my God, I, yes, love that you're Korean. Let's go. Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm but it sounds like from the video, it sounds like from the video, though, they would totally be okay with that. If you were in Korea, it sounds like from the video, they probably would be down for that. And they would. Because they wouldn't have to lie. It would make me feel weird. I'm going to start having all these complexes and my mind already thinks a million times a minute. Like, I don't need any extra shit cloud in that. So if you interested in me, blanket statement to everybody in this world. Just try to get to know me. <laughs> <In this world. laughs> so would you prefer them have that ulterior motive that as soon as I clap them cheeks, I'm getting out of here? Well, if that's if that's what it they, is. They don't tell you that. They just, they they stroke your ego and make you think you're the best thing since sliced bread and they may one day love you and marry you want to be with you. But it's secretly, they know deep down. They just want to see what their mouth do. That's the thing. I've also been in that situation as a person who does not date exclusively my race. I have been in many right. situations where I've dated outside of my race. And more than once, <laughs> <laughs> I've come to the realization that things might not just be my personality, you know? Mm. And I adjust my dating preferences in a way I move based off of that. I'm not some miserable person. I'm not out here just not giving nobody chances, but I right. do pay more attention. I, 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 I ask more questions. I pay more attention to answers and I, mm -hmm. I, I move differently. So if somebody yeah. wants to try and pull the wool over my eyes in that way, go right ahead. I'm still going to get my little name. <laughs> and maybe so I who's your, who's your top it. tier? Who's your top tier the finest person to you? We're I mean, we're talking about the K-pop people. And it has so to be, we, I was about to say, outside of because if I'm just going off top when it comes to, to black men it's gonna be right right now i'm in like a michael b jordan headspace i've been trying to get out for the last couple of weeks he's just everywhere <laughs> now so he's always in he my face and right i'm now. just like salivating he is a nerd too and i love that yeah love it but uh outside of that like specifically korea yeah korea oh it's jaman it's jaman hand down from bts so jaman came up to you and was like i've never been with a black guy before i'm gonna look him up and down I um, am immediately going to be offended, but then okay, you are gonna be offended. Uh -huh. I am. And how how obvious is that offense? Offense. It's, it's it's not gonna be it's not gonna be obvious because I gotta decide if I'm gonna move forward or not. <laughs> 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 There's gonna be some thought process here. I'm not gonna lie to you. I would never do that. I'm going to be offended, but then I gotta think about how many times I fantasize about this moment. But uh -huh. I'll tell you this: uh -huh. you take away the caveat of it being Jamin or uh, somebody that I've like oh, thought no, about for years. Like I said, if it's just him, him it's a chance it might him. go down. It might go down, and I'm gonna feel bad about myself in the morning. <laughs> more than likely, are you though? I, I actually am because I, while I'm living in cloud nine that night, and more than likely that morning, when that afternoon or that next night come around, I'm gonna have conversation with myself. I'm not gonna like. Yo, I don't have a conversation with yourself. It's gonna happen. That you can't Just tell me. Just leave yourself on red, so you don't have to have that conversation. <laughs> I wish, <laughs> bitch, if there was a chip that we could put in our head to cut off thoughts, I yeah. would. I would do that shit tomorrow. But my brain yeah, works no in the way body. it works. It's not. Yeah, this, I already yeah. am horrible to myself when it comes to critiques and being hard on myself. Don't throw that. And, and you and you wouldn't be able to find the positivity in smashing Jimmy. In. Like you wouldn't. I would be able have to that night. It. Like I was the bad. That's bitch what <laughs> that was picked. I was that's the chosen what... one. Bree, that's what would have got me over the threshold. But it's over. <laughs> okay. You know. Okay, I ain't even speaking to you no more. I'm talking to the niggas in the chat. Don't you speak know, to me because I'm so. You know when no that nut leaves. <laughs> when you are no longer filled to your brim, reality uh -huh. hits you like a tidal wave. You have like that'd be all kind of questions. I mean, why did I even do this? Why, why am I here Brick right now? Why the bricks hit you is usually like, oh, they were probably a little more unattractive than I thought when I was under the influence of whatever. Or you did something maybe you weren't proud of. Like, what other reason is there for bricks to hit you if you wanted to do it? Just that. Like, there you go. They got that clarity afterwards. Like, I would have sat back and thought about my scruples. 
thought about what what I stand for as a person, and it would have went directly opposite to what I did last night, and I would feel a way about that. Oh, that is so terrible. I'm so sorry. I know, and that, like I said, that you have the- such a strong moral compass that you would really have to feel that way. That's no, not I, good to be. Morally it's not with everything, ambiguous. but I do. I, I will fully own that. I dare because, like, honestly, I'm a type of person who I've openly and actively ignored so much in my life up until a certain age to where mm-hmm. I actually start attacking shit, you know. And a lot of that was internal stuff and some heavy internal stuff. And so now that I'm at this this little big age of 31. I take a mm-hmm. I, I take a lot more heed and a lot more weight to my thoughts and the way I talk to myself and the way I treat myself and the things that I right. I tell myself to do and the mm-hmm. things that I don't do that I tell myself to do and all of that stuff is very important to me. So like in that type of situation, had it been six years ago, oh, it wouldn't have been a thought. He would have got smashed. Right. I'd have went about just... my day. I probably would have sl- like snuck a picture of something and showed it to my friend. Like you know, like that <laughs> would be like, yeah, I'm gonna be telling people this forever. But now, Forever. like, if, if that same situation happened, yeah, I would have my high moment. I would, you know, go to sleep exhausted, wake up that same, that next night. It would, it would, it would be a little bit of turmoil in my head. Oh, that's unfortunate. Uh, he said, you got to catch these dreams. Some of us got to dangle hope. It's just going to be a thing. Um, well, I mean, I understand that. But um, let's see. Let me make sure we hit all our talking points. But that, no, that was a fun segue. But I think it is something that has to be. And I mean, but ultimately for me, I think my ultimate decision as far as like K-pop, I don't feel the need to chase K-pop artists down and be like, oh my God, they're appropriating. Oh my God, this and this and that. I don't feel strongly about a lot. As long as you don't do blackface for me, I feel like I'm okay for me, for the most part. I'm just thinking about what I've actually had a response to. When I saw Kai from EXO with the do-rag, it definitely made me giggle a little bit, but... It doesn't really bother me. Um, box braids, it's kind of annoying, but it doesn't really bother me. I think as long as they don't do blackface. And I really do see that they're like mixing um, like rap and hip hop and R&B with their own culture. Because it's very much a unique sound still. I mean, for the most part. I mean, when you listen to most K-pop. Hold on, keep, and, I'm be right back. Uh-huh. When you, okay. When you listen to most K-pop, J-pop or whatever, even though they're like borrowing from like hip hop and R&B and stuff like that they're still mixing it in and they have a very unique sound. So I, I mean, as long as I see that like this new subculture is being born and it's very much so them mixing it with their aesthetics and stuff like that. I personally, it doesn't bother me. What do y'all think? Uh, As far as in the chat, we've had this conversation. We've defined appropriation, appreciation. We've talked about, you know, what we think makes it okay, how we ourselves manage our own um, appreciation of Asian culture and, examples in the united states and i feel like at the end of it all like i feel like to, at the end of it all like i'm i'm ultimately okay with k-pop being the way it is and k-artists um i don't feel the need to police them at all so i mean that's just kind of where i've arrived critically drinking said i'm watching shadow and bone which i'm about to jump on oh, tonight. I need, to. I need to catch up because i haven't finished the first season oh my gosh okay listen I am so ready to watch Shadow and Bone. I know I'm gonna be pissed off because ain't no way she's gonna pick that her friend. I don't know who she gonna pick. The picking the chosen is had not been chosen, but ain't no way. Um, I'm I'm watching Shadow and Bone, and he said eliminate hope and you gain clarity. You gotta keep them clouded with hope. Um, I'm good with anything appreciation or appropriation, really, as long as people aren't excluded based on race. True. I, and I feel like my my last thoughts on that is like stuff is going to bother me. It just is. And I can't help the way that I instinctively react to it. But at the same time, I'm not one of these people out here on YouTube comments. I'm not sending death threats and emails, you know, like unless some stuff is just overtly egregious. That's the only time I'm really piping up. I'm still going to listen to it. I'm still going to, you know, do me. But until it gets to that egregious point, when, when Jameen comes out here and does a blackface number, with big booty bitches on stage, that's when I might tune in. Oh my God. You know? Yeah. But other that's than that, like the shit, and especially when it when it keeps sounding good, because <laughs> the first two songs we played at the top of the show, I can't oh say God. I'm not, I might not press play on it again just to be like, okay, let me look at this one more time, just to see how oh, I feel no, about it. And I really just because, like, even, <laughs> even like New Jeans, which is another like, Korean group, New Jeans killing the game, and it's just definitely like something that I could hear a black art uh, artist make. 
there's a few i have a quite a spotify playlist and there's a few that sometimes i think they are black people when they're singing if they weren't singing in korean i would know um and so i mean um yeah it is what it is uh just so y'all know most of the people i asked this poll on instagram before the show and you know most people 85 percent of people who voted on the poll said that they think it's appropriation so 85 percent said appropriation and my um following on instagram is mostly black so yeah just so y'all know the results of that poll so most people think i guess appropriation but based on the um the definition Twan read at the top of the show of appropriation, I mean, I feel like it fits, but I really still don't feel very strong about. I don't feel like it's something that needs to be canceled. K-pop, you know. Yeah. As long not they that. don't say the n-word and you ain't putting on blackface. Oh, that's like another thing props, too. You that's using another black thing. people as props. No, the the n-word because it took mm -hmm. me a minute to realize that nigga and I think nigga and nigga is you and i in korean oh yeah no yeah so, don't be trying to pick out english words that's yeah. the thing a lot of times <laughs> i be sitting here getting shell shocked because all of a sudden i hear this korean man talk about nigga and and i gotta look up the <laughs> lyrics to see he is simply just saying i in the yeah, song yeah that's good to know that but is good to know there are times when like i think it was it could have been it could have been him too with the do rag. There was a performance where huh? he chose to take the do rag off at the moment uh -huh. he said "nigga." So I was like, uh -huh. like "Okay, so y'all, y'all tip, y'all tipping the line." Because now <laughs> y'all know. Because think of think of think of how many songs you know and how many times the words "I or you" is used in it. A uh, shit ton. And hey, you taking them off at I? Maybe it was like a really like emphasis on the I. Mm. So that's what I'm saying. So I'm gonna have to actually look up lyrics when I hear this now. Just Not you combing through lyrics. Effect. If I get no, it, it's like if I hear it wrong. Like if they just do right. da, 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 nigga, da, 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 I'm a, I'm ain't gonna, ain't gonna pay no attention to it. But if you do it, da, 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 nigga, I'm gonna be like, whoa, <laughs> whoa. He's like, like, this is only for the U.S. crowd. We gonna make sure we say right. it real loud. Uh, he said, find out Kai asking if black women taste like peaches. Listen, I'm married off for my own good okay but if i was single and i find like kai from exo was looking for volunteers to see if black women taste like peaches <laughs> sign me up bitch <laughs> she said i might actually i might actually I'm gonna go. give him what we he wants we finna head out we finna head out i am definitely a, a person who believes let in research look, let me see what advancing scientific research evidence-based practice which means you have to experiment to figure out if these are consistent results I am a, a science major at heart, and so people got to people got to experiment. Oh yeah, you know what cutie. I mean. He a cutie. Yeah. There was another one. Who did I just? We definitely um, signed up just for fall the, in love with. Uh, Suho. It's a it's a it's a rabbit hole. Why are we doing this? You know what I mean. Mm -hmm. I'm, uh, yeah, it's okay. You know, it's just a part of life. We're all adults. Um, let me see. Well, no, it's been a good chat. This went better than I thought. I hope people who catch this on replay or if you catch this podcast, um, I hope you, I hope they make it to this point because we went through a lot of stuff. I think we did a good comprehensive talk about it. We went into dating, how how Korean attitudes feel about dating black people, all that stuff. I think we covered all the bases with this conversation. So we probably gonna get drugged because people gonna see the title Absolutely. and they're gonna come and leave comments. Absolutely. Um, but. As far as me and Twan, we're hypocrites. We're giving it the okay. Just don't do blackface. Don't say the N word. And don't use black people as props. I yeah. actually would prefer don't. I don't want to see black black backup dancers. Do not go to Miley Cyrus route. Yeah. I don't. Or, or yeah. Or like Gwen Stefani when she had the Harajuku girls oh, with yeah. her. Did like those Japanese speak? girls. Yeah. But they like only spoke Japanese. You know what I mean? So it's like don't don't use people as props. So as long as those three things don't happen, I am a-okay. Um, anything else before we do the final? I do my cleanup, Twan. Uh, I was trying to see. It was uh, say whom. That's what it was. Say whom. Mm -hmm. From what? Say are whom. they from a group? Uh, yeah, from EXO. Oh, okay. Yeah. Look, listen, I'm not gonna say once again. <laughs> just, li just believe me. 
your girl's morally ambiguous when it comes to some stuff um he said i enjoyed them um so the next time i'll be live i usually go live on monday to have a just chatting I, I don't know if that's gonna happen yet so just make sure you're subscribed or you follow me so that you'll know if i go live on monday usually i just chat about whatever comes up that i want to talk about usually live over on critically drinking's channel on tuesdays for the ism show um and that's the only thing scheduled also um i did a show with candy and it wasn't a live um we are talking about like advocating for family members it's like a nursing um helping people learn how to talk speak up for your family members who are in the hospital taking mm -hmm. care of family members is going to be like multiple parts part one is out on candy ann's channel um it was a great show i'm really proud of it so make sure you check that out um, I, I can't click the, the link. Of it. yeah i can't put the links because uh my chat's broken um but yeah that's about it and i'm gonna go watch shadow and bone which i feel like we're probably gonna end up talking about because i just love it so yeah stay tuned did, did so the season two just start yeah the whole season is out oh the whole season is out okay mm -hmm. yeah they dropped the whole thing so oh no i missed the phone call no <laughs> damn it <laughs> sorry right, but you. yeah anyway um but y'all enjoy the rest of y'all evening and don't forget to keep it cute thanks for watching bye, bye.